Hello everyone, my name is Shrin Fontaine. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Part 3. Yes, welcome back to Part 3 of Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, now when we left off, uh, I was just about to write my second poem. Um, and the plot twist didn't happen yet, uh, which you would know if you've seen parts 1 and 2. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2 of this Let's Play, I highly, highly recommend going back to my channel, which you want to go back very far since I should be that blues right before this. I should have made a playlist, uh, by now with those videos. Go back right before this, you will see part 1 and 2. I recommend starting at part 1 so that you're not just jumping into this game out of nowhere, uh, and confused. Real quick, if you know what this game is, it's a dating simulator thing, but with a little twist. It's not... Maybe just a dating simulator thing, anime thing. Yeah, good episode one, bitch. So yeah, we we, we were last playing 333 in the morning. So here we are. I uh, honestly still my bitch is still not a Suki, not a Suki. So uh, we need um something uh something cute. Uh, feather? No, that was her. God damn. Um, skirts. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, I want a puppy. Oh yeah, man, not a Suki, my bitch. Get out of Yuri, ugly. Why doesn't it show Megan or whatever her name is? is her, name, her name's not Megan. What's the other one's name? I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> I forget names easily. Um, uh, uh, uh. We need um. Uh, milk. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, chocolate. Uh, uh, yeah, socks with fucking friends. No, that was her, damn it. They're, they're too close, man. I really like the music, though. Uh, cheeks. There we go. Sugar. Yes. Pleasure. Uh, uh, warm. Nope. Uh, giggle. Yes. Death. <laughs> Yes, obviously. Anime uh, smile? No. Uh, fun? No. Damn it! I don't want that one. I want the pink-haired girl. Well, not a Suki. Uh, I, I know her name because she's she's my bitch. Bitch! Lollipop. Okay. Um, disown. Wrath. Uh, dazzle. No. Silly. No. Scars. God. Uh, spinning. Yes. Uh, Doki Doki. I, I don't know who likes Doki Doki. I don't know. Um, vanilla. Yes. Uh, s bunny. Kitty. Whew. Got out of Suki again, man. That's my bitch. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the huge, usual scene greets me. Hi, moldy faggot. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just so not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. Uh, when did I start recording this? Sorry. Okay. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always simple things with you anyway. Bitch. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No. <laughs> That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? <laughs> Why that? All of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah! Sayori nervously retrieves her coin for it. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents fill in the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah! I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So, either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Oh! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Hi, I'm gigantic, and look how big I am compared to everyone else. Yuri suddenly giggles. <coughs> I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in the book as always. Aha. Uh -huh. I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Moldy Faggot to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't let me... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah! Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. 
I got too absorbed into my book. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think of that. You were right, though. It did something bad. I did something bad, and I'd accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still coming for you from you, Sayori. I mean, uh, I guess there's a little devil inside of us, isn't there? Oh, instead of us all, isn't there? Sayori's my number two bitch, though, if a pink haired bitch. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes, so I had to check it out as we get to making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Whap! What the fuck? Kaya! I don't know, or somebody smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. What the fuck? Well, what, what was it? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Oh! Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. There's my bitch right there. There's my fucking oh yeah. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ah, Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Muff! Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Eh! <laughs> you're going through a lot over the just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours really looks good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy they shared this one with me. Eh! <laughs> Sayori gets her out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. Oh, God, stop. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um! Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh -huh. Mouthful of Sayori trots the way to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Change your search your kid sometimes! Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh! Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. What, what's, what's my phone doing? She's probably just had something to do today. Oh yeah, I, I didn't realize other girls in here. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, that's true. Is she supposed to be the hot one? And um, she's like... I, I, pink hair bitch first, then Sayori, and then her, and then Yuri. Uh, the, the, I forget the other girl's name. The one that's supposed to be hot. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. There she is, Monica. She's supposed to be the hot one, but I'm like, I don't know. She's got a flat shovel face. I don't... Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose to glove over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quickly... Quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh, that makes no sense, though. You would have had the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I was the one you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. <laughs> I kind of just started recently. I've always been wanting to learn the piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds like cool. That sounds like cool. No, it's, it actually says that sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I will let you down, moldy faggot. Monica smiles sweetly with her ass poking out towards me. Ah! I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really have the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. I feel like she was doing some, some crazy shit. We made her late. That's the guess. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared in the closet. Oh, it's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I kept my promise. I pulled the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns it over, presumably to check her wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. 
Well, anyway, let me put this one back. Oh, she's smiling at me. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Let's see who makes her way to the closet. I follow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the old tooth bitch. I'm gonna suck on that little tooth. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Ah, the chapter ended with Minori and Alice found- Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates from out from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Ah, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in my closet, so I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there. I decided to organize it a bit. Ugh! The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. Or Natsuki's, wherever. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez! This is so inconvenient! I'm moving all of these back down! There's plenty of room in these shelves! And besides, they're really pretty looking when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that time on the top shelf? Ah, uh, Natsuki, there's a student in the world there. Uh, is her name Natsuki? And I've been saying Natsuki all this time. I must have been pissing you guys off if I, if I have been saying it wrong. I don't know if I've been saying that the whole time or not. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's still hanging on the wall. Or hang on the wall, whatever. If you want, you can reach up there and hand them to you. I can reach up there and hand them to you. Jesus Christ. I can get them myself. Not so you grab the stuff from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I mean... I know it! Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops on the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of the collapsible design. Ah, ah, careful. I know what I'm doing! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's finger just reaches the top shelf. The stool will be enough for me to easily grab the bucks, but Natsuki's... Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Ah! Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? <laughs> this box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Wawa! <laughs> Wawa! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. Uh, land her feet, whatever. She holds the box triumphantly. There! I'm almost fell. Natsuki's a bit shaken up. Jeez, no need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. I don't want your help, okay? Sorry. I'm gonna go get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient for in the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind him. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Aha! It's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls, but I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Shush! Natsuki climbs under the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. She, said she refuses my help. I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Ooh! Oh, yeah! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Aha! There we go! See? I can easily do it now. Natsuki grabs the stack of manga and blends, bends down to put it on the shelf below. Whoa! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you- what are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it that told me not to help? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm getting close to her ass now. I hold the chair on as soon as she reaches back up. She happy now. I can- I can only see up her skirt. Yeah, that's what I said. Gah! I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes this, I'll be dead. Hup! Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's bike set. Easily the hardest one on the shelf. Ah, oh, heavy, hoy, moldy faggot. I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry up and take this one. Eh, but then I'd let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right, just let me stand up. I slowly raise my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box. Well, what are you looking at? You're trying to look at my... my... Natsuki's like shake. I'm not, I was just... Uh, Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But... I'll do it to myself! Uh, the chair suddenly says between Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! KO! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the box go flying. I got you. CRASH! Oh my. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh. That was me. My right arm back seriously felt the impact. Uh -huh. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Dick! She presses her arms into me to prop herself up. Uh -huh. Natsuki seems to realize it's, it's on the floor that's beneath her. Gagoo! Gross! Gak! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. 
What were you thinking, you sicko? Everything okay over there? I heard a lot of loud noise. Monica suddenly appears in. Monica, see what happens when you put the mango on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! Sorry. <laughs> ha ha ha. Oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert, so I hope you're happy. I didn't. Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no, my, my. Eh? I look down. Nasuki's leaning, kneeling on the floor, holding on the books that are scattered over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Ah, I must have landed on that page. Nasuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Stop! Natsuki, are you? No! She crying. Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Uh, I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so. Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much! I miss! I love you for the band aid today! Natsuki stops again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's fine. It's fine. Is there anything you want me to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day. It's so hard. I just want to come to club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Uh, I pick up volume two of Parfait Goes. We'll set this one aside. This will, this, will, this will help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with the glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're, you're really nice to me. Eh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? <laughs> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles, stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us and I begin gathering scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it in. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books in the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool and Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. A lot of reading. <laughs> Natsuki is holding the volume I set inside in her hands. All right, all right, I'm ready. Good! Either you were, I'd make you anyway. You take your responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up, if you, ins if you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's moved quickly and bruised, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together this manga. In this manga, I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep! Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. Hey! <laughs> Told you! Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Who should show me? Of course, Natsuki. That's my bitch. Hello, baby. Keeps glancing at me in the back of the poem. But now she must have read more than once. Ugh. Hmm? Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poem's supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy yours writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. You... Natsuki's face freezes like she's just realized something. You, you, you... You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom! Red face, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, moldy faggot, did you do something, Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, no, I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I can tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica seems, sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, not not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Molly Faggot? Cheating? What do you mean by that, bitch? Never mind, I'm just kidding. Look at my ass. I don't know. I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! 
As Suki comes up and snatches bone off Monica's hands, neither of us had noticed her re-enter the question. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Oh, you should first stop doing, reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Ugh. But Molly Faggot wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share with everyone, right? <laughs> Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is expecting me forever to read. Okay, well, I think Molly Faggot is done sharing his poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? <laughs> with your ass out, bitch. Never mind. Ah, uh, Natsuki, I'll give you my poem, but that's not very fair to Sayori. I'll give you the poem, that's not very Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Motifagot is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine! Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. <laughs> but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends talk like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. That was... Uh, that was beautiful. Um, not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yes, way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of, of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I were to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares if someone who likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. I can actually in real life relate to that very strongly. <laughs> You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider yourself lucky, okay? Ah, uh, well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez! Let's look forward to tomorrow, okay? All right, I will. Sayori. Yuri always comes last. Fuck, fuck Yuri. Monty faggot, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not holding anything, but... Your poems are good. Oh, hiding, I don't know. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so. Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is least likely to admit how, she li how much she likes something, but I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Whoa! Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How much is to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure, even little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. What, how long have I been recording? Okay. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Sai, you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. Yeah, yeah! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? M maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, moldy faggot, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Eee! <laughs> ah! Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Sorry, are you even listening anywhere? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap! Ah, uh, I broke my pencil, but what, I have to give this to Nasuki. 
Uh, Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being intent on her drawings, she bumps right into me. Sorry, it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind her, besides her, and his words up, knees shaking. I I'm a little clumsy today. Ah! <laughs> well, sit down, Sayori. Yeah, I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry, I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles! I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shadows against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They're supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Wow. Holy crap, Sarah, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I think I'm... I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah has always had a bad habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it in no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Yuri. Um, are you still mad at me? Eh? For disrespecting Nasuki yesterday, because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me, because you, you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no! Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How can I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, then things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair when you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri's mom sadly puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something I should plan today, so if everyone could come sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have something to do something for the festival? It's not that we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really... I really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for it. I skipped it like a retard. What did it say? Doing for the event. Okay. Ah, sorry. I, th I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Pfft. 
Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let everyone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori has been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then we'll inspire, uh, inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Or being intimate with yourself. It's, what the fuck is my mouth? Finding new horizons. And having fun! That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club tonight. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it! Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying re really trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just uh, have to get over with it. Get it over with, I don't know. All right! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, uh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. <laughs> no way! Monica! Oh, Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your pussy in front of the whole- in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start it. It'll. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica looks through and looks at the poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is "The Way They Fly." And you guys are gonna have to wait until the next episode to hear it, because. I have been recording this episode for about 35 minutes. Uh, it's going on 35 right now. It's been 35 minutes, and that's actually it's been over 35 when I go to OBS. It's been 35 and a half minutes, so episode's getting uh, it's getting up there, and we're gonna have to cut this off now. So that plot twist, which doesn't exist, wink, wink, still hasn't come yet. So far, it still really has been an innocent dating game. Uh, I I have about hour, an hour and a half gameplay into this. Now, if I were playing this alone, like if I weren't playing this for the channel, I'm sure I would have reached the point where this would have happened by now because I could read it in my head and everything and just keep going and going and going. When I have to say everything out loud and make sure I get everything right and, you know, kind of do it for you guys, that's obviously going to slow things down a little bit, which is why it's taking so long to get to that, I think. But, you know, I can't really just make a video of me reading things silently. That'd be pretty fucking boring, I think. Uh, so I didn't want to just make it reading things in my head. So that's why it's taking us so long. But I actually enjoy the game already, even though I know the point of it hasn't been reached yet. I, I, I really do not know what's coming. I have purposely not looked up the game. I won't even look at the name of the game because I'm so worried about seeing something that spoils it. The only reason I know about this game is because a while ago, my sister found it on the store. She saw the ta uh, on the on Steam store. She saw the tags and uh, she she thought it was weird what the tags were saying, like psychological horror and all this shit. Um, and uh, then she told me about YouTubers uh, playing it. And she played it and it scared the shit out of her. And um, that's all I know. Like I I refuse to look up anything. I don't want to spoil it. So, but there's nothing. Huh? Wink, a wink, a wink. A wink. Maybe the next episode 
will reach something. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. If you do comment, I will answer because, as I always say, I have absolutely no life, nothing to do with my life, and I love hearing feedback. Uh, if you're watching this, there's a good chance that episode 4 is already uploaded. If you're watching this, um, you know, it's been up for a day or two or whatever uh, because uh, I'm trying to record these pretty quick, one after another, and get them up real fast. And, uh, you know, if, unless you're watching this, like, really close to the news uploaded, uh, episode 4 is probably already up, so go ahead and check that out. That'll be a real sexy, real sexy time for you, you know? Yeah. So, uh, can't, I, I am excited to continue this game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment, and I hope to see you in the next video. And, <sighs> how'd I get a little lightheaded there? As always, have a fantastic day. <laughs> Well, because... I like you, Motor Faggot! Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected! <laughs> what? I was the one whose food's magically grew inside me as when the Motor Faggot started showing up! Hey, I pointed that out!